Hello viewers, thank you for welcoming us in your homes and making us a part of your Sunday evening. This is Crime Watch, a program where we highlight to you our roles and operations. My name is Onisisa Sibanda. The Southern Africa Regional Police Chiefs Corporation, SAPCO, Chairperson, Lieutenant General Joseph Shimilawo Shikongo, who is the Inspector General of Namibia Police Force, visited the country as part of his tour of member countries. His mission was to visit the National Central Bureau, Harare, and assess SAPCO and Interpol resolutions implementation. Honorable SAPCO Chairperson, effective cooperation is an indispensable hope in the fight against transnational organized crime. While as police, we continue to be hammered by national boundaries, criminals, on the other hand, respect no boundaries. We therefore need to continuously strengthen our solidarity at the bilateral, regional, and international levels. Remember, a criminal in Zimbabwe seldom becomes a priest in Namibia. With this in mind, I would like to take this opportunity to reaffirm the Zimbabwe Public Police's commitment to strengthening cooperation at all levels. May I also share with you that we have taken a conscious decision to attach colossal value to gender mainstreaming in our policy endeavors. To this end, we have always ensured proportional representation of females in our recruitment, promotions, and key deployments such as the United Nations peacekeeping missions. In the same measure, we continue to encourage women to apply for challenging posts. Chairperson, I am optimistic that we shall gain important lessons during your visit, which shall afford us as the Zimbabwe Public Police to improve our policy trajectory as well as contribution to regional and international policy. As Chairperson, I'm mandated by Resolution 11 of the seven sub AGM to visit member states to assess the level of implementation of the sub core or SADA sub core decisions, as well as the Interpol resolutions, and are certain challenges facing member countries, as so as to collectively adopt the best practices and the strategies for sub core to remain relevant in the regional policy. I have noted with appreciation that uh, Zimbabwe Republic Police has been able to participate in most of the regional capacity building and training interventions. The South Core and the Interpol operations to combat cross-border and transnational crimes, as well as for having registered your presence in all regional meetings, either physical or visual, this level of commitment is rare and I should commend you to continue doing that. It is disappointing to note that some of the police forces or services in the region have not been consistently making their contribution to, to this due course. I must therefore highlight and recommend ZRP for having been consistently and timely paying it, it is contribution. This is indeed exemplary leadership by ZRP through your leadership, Comrade Matanga, which is worth emulating. ZRP has always been seconding capable officers to serve at the regional bureau and has also been consistently enrolling members in the programs offered by the Center of Excellence. I must again commend the management of, ZR, of ZRP for taking a lead in SAPCO programs and activities. Before ending my statement, Jacob Wright CGP, it is pertinent to underline that the need for your continuous participation and taking lead in SAPCO initiatives is fundamental for our organization to remain relevant to the policy needs in our region. 
The three-day visit saw the SAPCO chairperson visiting Civil Aviation Authority of Zimbabwe at the Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport. He also toured the SAPCO Center of Excellence and the National Central Bureau at CID headquarters in Harare. General Joseph Shimilawo Shikongo made a courtesy call at the Namibian Embassy where he had a meeting with the Namibian Ambassador to Zimbabwe, His Excellency Ambassador Nicholas Kanji. Later on in the day, the SAPCO chairperson met the Minister of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs, Honorable Ziambi Ziambi, who was standing in for the Minister of Home Affairs and Cultural Heritage, Honorable Kazembe Kazembe. Moving on, Zetara PCI Dimashingo arrested two accused persons for cases of unlawful entry and theft. Their arrest cleared 15 counts of unlawful entry and theft cases and various household goods and electrical gadgets were recovered. On the 10th of February, police received a tip-off that the two suspects were selling a brand new cell phone suspected to have been stolen. The detectives reacted to the information and arrested the suspects and were linked to 15 cases of unlawful entry into premises and theft. The accused persons were using a crowbar to force open the doors whilst the complainants were sleeping. The two accused persons were employed as security guards at a mine in Manyame area, Masringo. They have since appeared in court and one of the accused persons pleaded guilty to all the 15 counts whilst the other one is awaiting trial. Members of the public are encouraged to do proper vetting of their potential employees. The police also urges members of the public to report all criminal cases, no matter how trivial the case may seem to be. Members of the public are also encouraged to know the serial numbers of their property for easy identification after the property has been recovered. With that story, we take a short break. Join us in the second segment. We are in the second segment of Crime Watch. Thank you for staying with us. Zetara PCA D. Gweru in Midlands province arrested three accused persons for cases of unlawful entry and theft, and various goods were recovered. Let us hear more. We have been experiencing cases of unlawful entry and theft, and at times, robbery cases. We managed to pick information that uh, there was someone who was hiding a property which was suspected to have been stolen. We rushed to that house in the Richmond area and managed to locate the suspect. And uh, through interview, that suspect uh, led to the recovery of property which was in a bedroom. And uh, the property which ranges from the television sets uh, kitchen wells, various clothes, gas tanks of different sizes, and other properties. We further interviewed that person, and he also implicated the other two accused persons. We managed to apprehend the other two accused persons, and they were brought to station. We sent the accused persons to court, and we were remanded in custody, waiting for their trial. On the same day again, we picked another information from a reliable source that uh, there is also an outstanding accused person in connection with this case who was seen hiding uh, at a hideout in Regimont area. We reacted to the information. And uh, upon arrival, we managed to pick that suspect. We interviewed that suspect. He led us to the recovery of uh, various properties uh, which were hidden in a pit at his place of residence. Moving on to Mashonaland East province, Zetara P. Dema arrested Lynette Takawira for the alleged murder of her three-year-old son. Let us get the story in detail. As Zetara P. Dema, I confirm the arrest of one Lynette Takawira who is aged 31 years of Deja Village, uh, Chief Seke, 
who is a mental patient. Uh, circumstances are that on the 13th day of February 2023 and at Disha village, uh, Lynnet Takawira together with the husband Kudakwashi Zinomarira who is aged 37 and their son Tanatsuka Zinomarira aged 3 years. They retired for bed around 2200 hours. The husband woke up, he could not find the wife and the son. So he started to conduct some searches with the help of the other villagers uh, in the neighboring area. Then during the search, they were informed by one nine-year-old juvenile who had seen the body of Tana Squadzino Marira at the shrine of an apostolic church. Upon arrival at the shrine, um, Kudakwashi Zino Marira managed to identify the body of Tananswa Mutasa Zino Marira and he subsequently made a police report. Police Dema attended the scene and while well at the scene, they managed to identify uh, the body of the deceased and conveyed it to Chitungiza Moshwara Hospital for post mortem. Also at the scene, the accused person was located in a pit. She was naked and she had smeared all her body um, with wet ashes and then she was arrested uh, and taken to Chitungiza court for initial remand. My appeal to the public is that those who have relatives who are mentally challenged or who are mental patients, you need to monitor them and ensure that they are within their arms reach. Also those on medications, you need to ensure that they religiously adhere to their medications so that we avoid such incidents. Moving on to traffic issues, the Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe has embarked on a blitz to inspect driving schools. Let us hear more from the Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe. The Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe has embarked on a blitz of inspecting driving school standards across Zimbabwe. The blitz started in Harare on the 13th of February 2023 and will cascade to other provinces. The Blitz seeks to ensure that student drivers are well trained and are not prejudiced by bogus and non-compliant driving schools. As we undertake the exercise, depending on the degree and nature of non-compliance, we will be giving non-compliant driving schools limited time frames in which to comply, but where we believe the level of non-compliance so warrants we will not hesitate to withdraw operating certificates and deregister those that have serious deficiencies. We will be submitting an updated list of compliant driving schools to the Vehicle Inspectorate Department with the expectation that those that will not be on the list will not be allowed to send their learner drivers to VID. The inspection covers all aspects which are given as prerequisites, which among others include NASA registration, Zimra registration, learner's liability insurance, and availability of suitable offices. As Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe, our vision is for Zimbabwe to produce competent drivers. We believe what we are witnessing on our roads with regards to drivers disregarding traffic laws could be a reflection of laxity in the driver training program itself. We will therefore leave no stone unturned in our efforts to ensure total compliance in our registration requirements. As Traffic Safety Council Zimbabwe would like to encourage all driving schools to fully comply with their registration obligations. We would also like to point out that while this is an initial phase, the exercise will be sustained and the inspections will be carried out randomly, at least quarterly. For the avoidance of doubt, those driving schools that repeatedly fall short of requirements may not be allowed to renew their certificates of operation. We take a short break. Join us in the third and final segment. We are in the third and final segment of Crime Watch. As the country is experiencing heavy rains, 
The ZRP sub aqua unit warns members of the public on the do's and don'ts during this critical time. The Met Department issued a statement that there is a cyclone Freddy which is set to hit Zimbabwe. Cyclone Freddy is a severe tropical storm which is characterized by strong winds. As ZRP sub aqua, we are advising people residing in these areas to stay indoors. For children, we are saying that children should stop going to school during that period of the cyclone, or if there is need for them to go to school, they have to be escorted by adults. We've received several cases of people drowning whilst they are crossing flooded rivers. So as Sabakwa, we are encouraging members of the public to desist from crossing flooded rivers. They should use designated bridges to cross from point A to point B. Or even if the bridges are overflowing, it is better to wait for the water to subside before you attempt to cross. The Zimbabwe Republic Police periodically trains its command for effective execution of duties. Recently, the therapy support unit carried out a seven-day senior officers retreat course to sharpen strategic and operational skills aimed at improving service delivery. It is gratifying to note that this retreat gives you as middle managers the opportunity to meet outside the confines of your work environment, share experiences and sharpen each other. Furthermore, the need for you to review implementation of resolutions passed at a similar retreat last year cannot be overemphasized. I am that optimistic that you will take advantage of this year's retreat to elevate your appreciation of the organizational strategic focus and exchange notes with your peers on how to continuously improve on service delivery. I am reliably informed that during your retreat, you shall focus on the following areas, history of Zimbabwe, National Development Strategy 1, the role of the Zimbabwe Public Police in contemporary policy, tactical planning, operational management, border governance, and weapon handling. It is not worth to point out that these courses cover both strategic and operational issues, which are important in the effective operation of support units. Ladies and gentlemen, this retreat is coming at a time when criminal cases involving firearms are on the rise, thereby heightening the fear of crime among the citizenry. The need for support units to swiftly respond and demonstrate depth skills in bringing these dangerous criminals to book remains paramount. Similarly, your presence along the national border should be felt by all while results are tangible and contribute to economic development. Additionally, 2023 is election year in which public disorder situations tend to be on the increase. Suffice to say that we are already in the election season. Therefore, we have the onerous duty of ensuring that peace and tranquility prevails throughout the country before, during, and after elections. Moving on, the Zetara P. Tomlinson Depot Primary School hosted a one-day golf tournament meant to raise funds to uplift and improve the school's sporting facilities. The facility will contribute in weaning off school-going children from drugs and substance abuse. The purpose of today's event is to raise funds for the construction of a multi-purpose sporting facility at Zetara P. Tromoson Primary School. Once complete, it is our fervent hope that the facility will certainly afford our children a vital opportunity to excel in various sporting activities. Given the challenges we are facing as a nation, particularly in combating drug and substance abuse, which is on the increase. 
It is undeniable that as a nation we need to confront head on this scourge which threatens to wipe out our future generation. Steps such as the one we have conveyed for are paramount in creating platforms and opportunities for our youth and children to engage in sport and other recreational activities. It is my hope that this event cements working relationships with the ZRP Tourism Depot School. I urge all corporates to help in the commission of this project, which will be a ground for scouting talent. I promise you all that the school will balance the pendulum and maintain the sporting facility thereby nurturing talents in fulfillment of the Minister of Primary and Secondary Education's mandate in the production of a holistic learner. Before we come to the end of this week's episode, here are some people on the police wanted list. Zetara P. Mkopa is looking for Wellington Maramba, aged 43, of house number 593 Mkopa 2, Weru, for a case of rape. Kazai Dube, aged 34, of house number 2906-1, stroke Mkopa 5, Gweru, is wanted by Zetara P. Mkopa for a case of rape. The therapy Mount Darin is looking for Takunda Musarura, age 26, of Mungando Village, Chief Matope, Mount Darin, for a case of theft. Anyone with information that may help in the location of those people should contact any nearest police establishment or contact us on the following details. Our national complaints desk number is 0242-703-631. Visit our website www.zrp.gov.zw or email us on feedback at zrp.gov.zw. You can also link with us on our Twitter handle at Police Zimbabwe or our Facebook page Zimbabwe Republic Police. If you miss any of our Crime Watch episodes, you can watch them on our YouTube channel Zimbabwe Republic Police. This brings us to the end of this week's episode. From me, Onisisa Sivanda, and the crew behind the scenes, it's bye-bye for now.